but I'm trying to be behind you most of the time. And what I wanted to do, my name is Virginia Pierce. This is my boyfriend. He came with me, Bill Jagowski. Thank you. And what's your name? Patsy. Patsy, it's nice to meet you. And I'm Sherry. Sherry, thanks for coming. It's nice to meet you. Um, and you don't have to really write anything down, any kind of links or anything or in this, this brochure today. So um, we're going to talk about how, thanks, how um, the project that I work with is called the South Carolina Digital Newspaper Program. And we contribute to uh, the free database called Chronically America. And it sounds like maybe both of you have looked through them a little bit? Or? Well, I've looked only on the Kiwi Courier on the South Carolina digital newspaper. I guess I got on there. I don't remember mm -hmm. where I got to. I don't think I went to the Chronicle in America. I don't remember where I got to. I went by way of, oh, really? yeah, I went by way of South Carolina or something that and that. Anyway, I, I have the link at least to that. Great. Well, I'm going to show you how to use that. And, Good. Um, the way I like to do things is anytime question comes up in your mind, just shout it out and we'll look at things and I always feel like that's a lot more helpful than trying to think about it till the end. And um, if there's anything that y'all want me to search, that was kind of what I had in mind today, so that can we can do some hands-on searches I'm today good. and um, just try to find the types of things y'all would like to look for. Are you doing genealogy or? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm interested in history anyway. Right. Okay. Okay. Awesome. We're hitting all the states we have in the database, that's great. <laughs> um, so we'll do that, and we've created, I work with a girl, she just um, took another drive, but in the last few years we've created different resources that help kind of show you when we find something interesting, to show you what's in there. We've got a subject guide and a blog if we came across an article, because we love history too, and we'll write about it or highlight it. And, um, Somewhere on here might be, oh, um, on the very back is our website, and I'll show you where yeah, that is. Yeah, I think that's the one I And I'm working on updating this brochure, so um, I think somewhere in here we said there's 7 million newspapers in Chronicle of America. It's uh, almost 10 million now, and they are, it's a 20-year program. Uh, they're trying to get to all 50 states. We were kind of on the early side uh, of uh, states that came and um, um, so I think 38 states have signed up and are participating or have graduated out of it. Like New York's already done everything they wanted. I think Pennsylvania's already done. So they contributed about 300,000 pages each of newspapers. And, um, and so we're one of those. Probably where I was going with that. But I'll remember. Uh, oh, it's a 20 year program. We're about 10 years in, so halfway through 10 million pages. And their uh, initial goal was to get to 20 million. There's always a possibility that there'll be funding at the end of that and they could keep going and re-invite people to come back on to the program. Do you have your own servers now in South Carolina that store all this or is everything stored in the cloud or on some massive server? Mm -hmm. uh, so, that's a good question. Everything that's on Chronicling America is servers at Library of Congress in Washington DC or in that oh. area and they're supporting everything that we send to them as part of this larger project. Um, we're kind of in the initial stages of starting our own local um, newspaper program. And the very first, so we do have a server at USC Libraries that we're maintaining and the Library of Congress designed, when I show you the Chronicle America database, they created this open access version of the database that we can tweak and work with. Mm -hmm. And so we downloaded that and put the USC student newspaper, it's called Gamecock, and that's our first project that's local. So we'd like to keep adding to that. Another project that we're working on this summer is in Horry County, um, some newspapers that Coastal Carolina is paying us to do on the side. So we'll just uh, very slow yeah, <laughs> to, to add this. Clemson and get their student newspaper on there. Absolutely, so. yeah, that would be fun, um, and that that's, something that's real easy sell with the colleges, that yeah. they would fund that. And, mm -hmm. um, for the Gamecock, we've done, it started in 1908, mm -hmm. and still going. We're doing all the way up to 2006. So what's up online now is up to 1988 in this wow. area we're adding on to. It. So, um, 
blocking it, but um, I just want to show you a couple of examples, and everything else is going to be just searching online, showing you different things. Um, since y'all are interested in genealogy, this is just a wealth of information looking for your family. You also said you might have a few skeletons in your closet when you look in the newspapers. I found them in my own family. And um, so you never know what you're going to find, fire, you know, fire beware. But there's a lot of interesting family reunion history and anniversaries. There was this great, like, half a page spread in the Newberry Herald and News about this um, man and woman that had been married for 60 years and uh, who all their kids were and their grandkids. They just had this you know, really large family that I'm sure all in New York. In that's impressive because people didn't even live hardly that long. So that's right. impressive. Mm -hmm. Six, celebrating 60 years of marriage in 1917, that's very impressive. And they got married, you know, it wasn't any earlier than normal. I think they were like 17 or 18 when they got married. So well, sometimes they're 14, but still. <laughs> that's right. still impressive that they're yeah. 70 in their 70s. They have a lot of healthy lives. Right. So they were born around 1840 to 50, or, or, or maybe even earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's very and That's impressive. kind of fun to think about the history, yeah. how far back they go. Yeah. Let's see how this works. So this is a database. I'm going to show you all how it works. Um, and if you ladies have questions, please pipe in too. I don't have to be <laughs> observers and things that y'all want to learn since we're here. Um, so this is what the database looks like, and I can walk you through it a little bit more. I won't jump on some of these other things about the site that you can look on on your own. The Library of Congress Periodical Room does a lot of great work. So they have recommended topics and a lot of really neat things if you love history. Um, last time I looked, there were over 100 topic guides and they have stuff about Buffalo Bill and uh, the Hole in the Wall Gang and all those things that were going on back in the 19th century. It's a lot of fun. So you can click on that and look at some of the articles they found that they highlight. And there's a real simple search here that we're going to try and show you how to do that. There's an advanced search where we can filter down and um, we can broaden our search or narrow it down with the advanced search and have a lot of great features. If you wanted to just look at South Carolina newspapers or New York or Pennsylvania or wherever, you can click on all digitized newspapers. It's going to drop you down the list of everybody who's participating now. And um, you could select South Carolina from there and see all the list. We've got, as of last week, I think, 93 South Carolina titles. Uh, we're aiming for 100, so we're really close to the end on this project. And if you were ever curious about any newspaper that's been printed in the United States, and it goes back to 1690, this is the most comprehensive directory that you're going to find in America. And you can come to Chronicle America, click on that tab, and search. Um, you could search Oconee County or Pickens County and see how far, how far back it goes. And any publication that was printed here, um, you know, a newspaper, you could look and see who might have disparate holdings, um, who might be the major holder, like for KOE, you know, USC ended up having those. And we appreciate your sending the rest of them down to us. Um, and then this is kind of fun, like 100 years ago today. And when I captured it, no South Carolina, but oftentimes we're in there, and you can browse through this. So I'll go over that more in a second. Um, so this is one of the, I'm sure y'all have done a lot of microfilm going to the library and looking through and you're like, I hope yeah, I find something is much better. Today. Yours is much better than microfilming, trust me, and the <laughs> copies on the printer are so much better. Right. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's wrong before you can even get a copy and you don't have to yes. 25 cents <laughs> worth or something. So uh, it's wonderful, it's a real easy sell, that it's free, um, NEH. National Endowment for Humanities is funding our projects nationally. Library of Congress designed this Chronicle America database and they administer everything else. And they're people that we work closely with. And as you probably already know, you can browse through the newspapers. I'm going to show you how to do that. You can do keyword search of your family, your community, anything you can possibly think of. Um, and we do optical character recognition to each PDF page and that's how we're able to keyword search. It's not perfect. I don't think we catch 100% because of the quality of the microfilm at the time, but I think it's pretty good. It's probably 75 or 80% of what you're getting. 
Um, like you said, easy to capture what you're interested in and save or print to your um, computer. And you can sit in your pajamas at 12 o'clock at night and do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not my new one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, this is who all is involved as of uh, last fall. They're about to announce, uh, sometime in July they'll announce who the new awardees are for this year. There's a lot of overlap because it's usually um, a six-year program per state. So the white states are not participating. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's Massachusetts. Who are you interested in? The Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody that we work with, the Connecticut, um, Vermont folks that we know, they said New Englanders are a very independent bunch. <laughs> so uh, yeah. they're like, we don't need mm -hmm. any of this. But we're getting everybody involved eventually. Do you know if there's anything like with Canada newspapers? Do you know if one exists? That's a good question. I've never been asked that. Um, I'll, I'll try to find out. Uh, I don't know. It would yeah, be nice like, to know. I know there's a European one, but I don't well, know about I Canada. I have a one family, yeah, so yeah. I'll be interested in that too. Hmm. We could search today and try to find out, see if there's an answer. And if not, I can yeah. follow up. Um, so a couple of gaps. We're always working on the Alabama and Georgia. We're like, come on, guys, we want to help you. We'll write the grant with you. Please, you know, everybody asks us about your two states. And finally, North Carolina got involved, so we were really excited about that. Uh, this is on our uh, homepage of the South Carolina Digital Newspaper Program website, and uh, I'm still working on updating some of this, but all the blue tabs are things that you could look if you left today and go um, and search, and the ones in red are ones I'm still working on getting them up online. Some of that's a lag time between. Um, uh, we do some metadata, we like page by page, we look at it and describe it in order to organize it online. We send it off to a vendor, it takes a couple months, get it back, look thoroughly at it, make sure it's right. We send it to the Library of Congress. That takes a few months before they look at it with fine tooth comb. Mm -hmm. We fix anything that needs to be fixed. And so it could be a year by the time we've started to finish to get it online. And I'm anticipating that everything that we've done, we're finishing up our current grant at the end of August. I'm anticipating everything to be done by October that should be online for you. So. But there's a lot today. Um, this is a lot of the upstate newspapers. I always, um, it's really great to look at the Kiwi Courier. It's one of our best examples of a newspaper. It's a long running one, 1849, I think is the first year or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, really wonderful. But I found that you may have something in the Anderson Intelligence or about the upcountry. Mm -hmm. You may have something, York, I mean, people are, it's almost kind of like the AP. Or you might have somebody who's interested in a topic that might be in Walhalla or in Westminster or something like that. So um, my advice is when you're searching about something, I'd start real big and just keep narrowing it in. And uh, don't just get tunnel vision on one newspaper um, and what you might find in that local uh, area. One of the beauties of looking very locally is you see something about picnics, family reunions, and really neat stuff in those. So here's some examples for uh, genealogists. Um, sometimes there's neat photographs. Um, in my own family, our um, our family house burned down, so the number of pictures that are available are very few and far between. So you might look in the newspaper and find a picture you've never seen before of a family member. Um, and these are all people. I can't remember where he's from. I know she's in Anderson. Uh, sometimes they use funny old-fashioned language, like you were saying, sire. Mm -hmm. um, Hymeneal is a very archaic term for um, a wedding, so there could be real strange variations in terminology that I would not say, I don't use that, you know, Hymeneal in my everyday talk now. Um, and I'm always interested in this Mance Jolly, I think he's an interesting, mm -hmm. legendary character locally, and I'm going to use him as an example to search later. And I also think there's always a neat connection with larger American history. There's a Miss um, Jane Butler, Butler died in Greenville. This is probably turn of the century, and her dad was Commodore Perry, who went to Japan and did all the famous things. 
Am I right, Bill? Is that who's in Commodore Perry? Am I getting this mixed up? It says she's the daughter of one Commodore Perry and the sister of another. Oh, okay. <laughs> This is a renowned top of the world race, but it must have been that. Uh, oh, yeah, that's him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The people you don't even know are living in your community. I wouldn't have known that. Um, one of the things I love, uh, here's that okay, 61st anniversary of the people I had a picture of initially. Um, really interesting. Um, one of the things I was looking up, um, we did a talk up in the Central uh, a few months ago. I was trying to get more upstate things. And um, so I found a family reunion. I think um, I think I searched family reunion and like the Pick and Sentinel. Just in, uh, filtered it down to that one newspaper to see what family reunions were getting advertised. And uh, so it said they had it at Old Salem Church. And um, one wonderful example is we didn't all stay in South Carolina. You know, all of the descendants didn't stay here. They moved west and it said, um, I wish I knew the date for this, but I think it's about 1920. So many of their descendants it says are right up there at the uh, top. August the what? Oh, you're right. Uh, 1901, 1907, or, or 1901. Or eight, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they moved to Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and California, and they all came back. Yeah. Home. So, think of all of our relatives that we don't know exist. When you search in the newspapers, you can look in Texas and all these western, go up north, and. Um, uh, people that we, our families, and within our lifetime haven't kept up with. We don't know they're out there. But for a genealogist, that's a real treasure trove. And I love some of the houses. I think that's another. Newberry was a wonderful newspaper, and they always had photographs of the community, where people lived, and that sort of thing. And this was a great old man. He's like almost 100, Farmer. talking about his life and who his family was. Sheely is a big name. You meet a lot of Sheelys down near Columbia. And um, just a fascinating description of his life. They even had his picture of his house and all of his kids sitting in front of it. So that could be um, your random gem of a picture to find in the newspapers. And talk about going way back. So this is 1915, and the man's like 90 something years old. So it's a lot of South Carolina history in one person. Uh, some more family reunions and pictures. They're really fun. Uh, stuff about different soldiers. Do y'all know who James McKee is? Y'all ever heard of him? This may not be true. Everything you read in the newspapers doesn't have to be true. But they're claiming that um, he was the last surviving um, soldier of the Mexican-American War. So that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. And he lived in Mile Creek section of Pickens County. Is that something everybody? I'm yeah, I know where that is. Yeah. To me. And um, you might be able to find this in other places, but you might find a lead on an ancestor. Um, this was all prisoners of war up in, um, in Maryland and um, where they were when they died, and if they've never found it anywhere else. So that could be something. This is a cute little guy, I think, in the Newberry area who, uh, this was his picture he was 16 served in the civil war and was the postmaster his entire life in, in newberry so mm -hmm. he lived well into the 20th century so it's a cute little picture um and you were talking about world war one mm -hmm. jennifer um this was great they started publishing letters home from soldiers during world war one and uh it's really cute he was like i learned to smoke i love my friends you know he's like having a good time so uh, it was really cute so that was closer to mary in south carolina i think uh, sometimes they have um, little bios, brief bios of, uh, this one is about, on the left, are living Civil War veterans. Uh, this is around World War One, I, I think, when it says 1910, when they put it in there. And um, it says where they grew up, where they're living now, what they did with their lives, which battles they fought in. So. There's a lot I don't, you know, I'm always thinking about my own family and trying to use that as an example. And um, I've learned a tremendous about who was fighting in which war and everything just from our newspapers. So you might find some really cool details about a family member here. This is a little closer in Anderson. They um, 
are talking about who the town business people were, town fathers, uh, judges, farmers, anybody who's you know some successful business person. Maybe they're all chamber of commerce people. I don't know. Um, really, really interesting in 1896, and it's maybe 30 page special issue about Anderson. It has pictures of people's homes, that sort of thing, the businesses. And some of them, if you read closely who all the different people were, they tell, like, this person came from Austria in 1840, settled in Anderson, South Carolina, lived out his life, all of his kids live here. So I, I just love it. Uh, this is something about community history that y'all probably recognize, Old Stone Church. Mm -hmm. Is that the place near Clemson? Mm -hmm. Right, right there on 73. It's a pretty church. Mm -hmm. uh, so at another talk I gave, people were like, I want to know about 12 Mile Creek Church and different things like that. You can find church history and that sort of thing about your community here too. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do on that type of thing. You think I can exit out of this? Yeah. And then I'll do some searches. Y'all have any questions? This is great. Though. Oh, I'm good. I'm Thanks. excited. Yeah. It's, it's, it's already, my mind's already reeling on things I've got to go home and do now. <laughs> yeah. I'm down Thank to you. learn about the surface. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, good stuff showing. All right, so nothing wrong with Googling. I'm going to show you, um, we're going to start with a couple of our local websites. So I just do SCDNP. You could go straight to the. Oops. You could use the website if you want to get a URL. So here's our website specifically about what we're doing. Describes what we're up to. Here's a little bit more updated um, map of. Um, all the sites we're doing. This might be us right here. You can click up on the western part of the oh. state and go right into Chronicling America there. It's, it just might be informational to know the years that we digitized for a certain paper. Maybe you're not as familiar with uh, Charleston paper. And you can see all the different ones we've done for Charleston mm -hmm. if you were interested. Um, what else? We've got our list here. I'm about to, I'm in the process. I don't know what this is going to look like because I'm in the process of putting it all in one place. But here's everything if you wanted to look locally, which I did it by county. That's how I kind of think about the state. Mm -hmm. So I grouped everything um, under publisher location and by alphabetically Abigail Anderson, Bamberg, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So you could see the groupings. This might help you later when I show you how you might search multiple papers at once and know what their titles are. Because they're not organized this nicely in the um, in Chronically America. This is one place you can go. And you come up to this About tab. You can go to Chronicling America from there. You can click on this icon right over here. We're going to come back to that. Um, let me show you this before I forget. If you ever have a question to follow up after our talk, um, I'm Virginia and you can email me or call me at the office anytime and I can walk you through something if you get stumped. So that's there. We've got a subject guide. It also has the list of the newspapers in there just like on the website. Uh, tips for searching if uh, I don't go over, if I forget to go over every single detail of how easy it is to use. So that's just kind of walking you through some things. You can come in here and I also um, several years ago wrote helpful tips that um, will walk you through the entire searching process. On our blog. And I'll show you what you need to do. So the blog is where all the tips are, right? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the um, so the blog. Let's see. It could have update information about what's going on with the program, 
and we'll list titles, whatever the latest thing that's been added on there. Um, here's tips for researching upstate roots. My favorite picture again. And this gives you some more examples of the types of things you might find. You think that's rain? That's our new air conditioner. I was like, wow, we've been waiting for yeah. rain. That's our new thing. <laughs> so anyway, this might give you a couple more um, uh, tips in here about Upstate, which newspapers are available. Um, Alright. I think one valuable thing, if y'all have ever used any other kind of newspaper database uh, at a library, one of the most special things about this database is you can actually see the physical newspaper copy, read it on your own. You're not just keyword searching and seeing what comes back um, electronically, like with just the content. So um, I haven't seen any other uh, newspaper database when I look at other ones that work so nicely and make it so easy for you to use, enjoyable to read. Thing. Let's see, let's go to all digitized newspapers like I showed you. You can come down here and let's choose South Carolina. You can choose any state. But now, want. see, it has Massachusetts there, but it wasn't colored. Right, so let's see, this may be, um, there's Georgia in there as well. Let's see. What do they have from Massachusetts? So there do have more. So it looks like this is the same thing. There's one Georgia title in there. Um, they must have started okay. in Massachusetts and ended up in Vermont or vice versa, and it got included with the Vermont titles. Uh, and just like with the Kiwi Courier, it was in Pickens and moved to Walhalla. So as a smaller, a similar example of a title, um, they move around sometimes, and sometimes it's outside the state lines. So don't be disappointed that one <laughs> Massachusetts for this time. That gets confusing. So, um, one thing I like to do, with the only ethnicity we've done is we did 10 African American newspapers, which are really cool to read through. Uh, there were really scattered copies of what was saved in South Carolina. We were able to borrow some from New York Historical Society and the Library of Congress, so I'll brought them back into. South Carolina at some point. But I'm going to say I want all ethnicities. Some of the other states are doing French and Spanish newspapers. We keep expanding that. And this will show you that other list. Uh, to me, it's a little messier than what we've done. But um, uh, it tells you maybe next time you look, it won't be 93 titles. It could go up. Um, we're we'll getting to about 100. That's what our goal is. And so it'll always tell you that. It'll always tell you how many pages are currently available. And so 9.6, and they just added an incredible amount the other day and added one of our batches of 10,000 pages last week. So it's always changing. And it can change your search results if you wait three months or a month. Next time you look, you might get different results. Is there a goal to have everything all the way up to present always on here available? We, um, I think they were trying to start with something manageable because that is a whole lot, it, it's all based on a um, earlier program where they took all the originals and made, converted them to microfilm. Yeah. And we still got the originals, but we were trying to proliferate the copies that we had and then local libraries could get copies and share with their uh, patrons. So anyway, um, that was called the U.S. Newspaper Program, and uh, the reason we're able to do this project so efficiently is we're working off the microfilm and not the originals. It's a lot easier and uh, more economical to do that. And the reason I'm saying that is that US, U.S. Newspaper Program, we were able to do about a million pages of um, converting original to microfilm of just South Carolina papers. What we're trying to get done here is about a third of that. So 
we're hoping that since we do have the masters of that other 650,000, that um, our local program will be able to work on that over time. Does the cutout pay have something to do with copyright laws? Okay, let's do that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, funny dates 1836 to 1922 is what we're able to do. Um, 1922 is the copyright cutoff date. Really? So you could make um, wrapping paper, print out a whole bunch of this, and make wrapping. You can do whatever you want with the content in here, um, and uh, it's copyright free. So copyright dates change, but for the newspapers, the cutoff date is December 31st, 1922, right now. So nothing newer than that will be in here. Not as of this moment. And I know it's missing a whole lot of really good stuff, people within our lifetime. But um, right now, they're not going to, they may well, expand the program eventually. So 1922. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they settled on the odd date of 1836 because that became a modern looking newspaper the way they have the columns and the way we can OCR without having to worry about. Um, that ligature printing where they did F's and S's, you know, old fashioned type of printing. And that's gone by 1836, and we were able to pick it up from there and make it better, keyword searchable. That's still, that's critical. <laughs> Thank you. So it's details I forget to say. I think you've heard this presentation. <laughs> One thing I thought would be fun is um, try to go look like a hundred years ago, hundred years ago today, at least in the vicinity. Um, if you wanted to see all the Kiwi Courier papers, you could come in here to this um, library catalog page. And that's all I've ever done is done that. So I'm I, I'm really glad to see all this other because I need to be shown in some of the other areas. Great. And um, this is also available on that page we were just on. You could go right to the first issue and start looking. Um, one thing I like to do is to drill down and look at the calendar. And just while we're here, my colleague writes these really interesting essays, and you can kind of learn about the history of the paper. And um, a name I always have in my head is Robert Thompson. Is that one of the editors? Mm -hmm. There's something I found about his daughter. So you might enjoy looking at those. Let's go into the calendar view. And, and that has been very helpful. Good. I'm so glad. Because I would pick a year, and I knew it was sometime in this time frame, <laughs> mm -hmm. and that really helped me pick. Oh, that's great. But I'm not done searching, so I'm anxious to see those. Oh, good. So I want to see what's something around June 1915. And you can come in, all of these dates we've digitized. Let's see, we've got a 1915. And you're going to see that these dates are going to change for each year that show up. And all of these, uh, all these little blue links in here means we've got something published on that day. So clearly it was a Wednesday paper that was very. Uh, it's still a Wednesday paper. Still, that's <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> Things don't change. Um, so let's look at the 23rd of June 100 years ago. And you can read the whole newspaper from beginning to end, or the whole issue, and see what was going on. Uh, so your results look like this. You've got kind of which page it is, starting from one, left to right, one to eight for this one. <coughs> um, you could come in here and click on the very first page. There's a couple of really great things. Um, if you had your, you don't have to have a mouse, I don't have one right now, but you could click, and just by doing the left click, you're gonna zoom in to be able to read and say, whoa, that might be a little too much. You can come up here and do plus and minus to zoom in and out. I like going over there to the red box and moving it around to be able to read it. So. Oh, cool. I've never mm -hmm. done that. Oh, nice. That gets you around the paper real quick. Yeah. That's a good idea. I'm going to start doing it. Oh, yeah. I use that. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. The board I usually do is in here, but um, that's awesome. So 
Yeah, so we easily got up to this corner, looking up at the top left, and you can toggle around with that <coughs> left click and hold it down and move it all around what you want to read and go up and down. So it's really versatile. Um, another nice thing is, I have to come up here for the features. Oh, uh, persistent link. If you copy this link and it's giving you a little bit of the citation information, you copy that onto a Word document or whatever you're using. Uh, it's this persistent link is never going to go away as long as this database is up. You can always come back right to that page. And um, word to the wise, I always think, oh, I remember exactly where I saw that. Well, I've seen <laughs> yeah. some really cool things I didn't write it down. <laughs> I'm really bad at myself. There was a neat one with this school teacher is sitting um, in a schoolhouse cabin up in this area. I've never seen it ever again. <laughs> I was doing the metadata originally, and I thought, oh, I'll catch it when it comes online. I just could not find the thing. It's buried in here. <laughs> it's even worse than microfilm. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's an important thing to remember. And, you know, there's a lot of this extraneous stuff, and your little <coughs> page is trapped in this box. You can take all that away by doing this little box with a line. And now your whole screen is the newspaper. It's a personal preference, but um, to me that makes it really easy to read. And it, you kind of have to go in and out. If you want to go to the next page, it's going to pop us back to the uh, thing. But that might be a helpful feature. So if I went back, it's going to pop me back to that other page. And then I can just go back in and out as I like. Now the reason I'm looking in here, um, the European War. <laughs> right, so we weren't even involved in the war yet, I don't mm -hmm. think, and mm -hmm. uh, they're talking about what's going on. And that's interesting. A lot of world coverage on the first couple of pages in this issue. That's one over. thing we get people um, disappointed sometimes because the newspaper a long time ago wanted world news because you knew everything that was right. going on locally. <laughs> Good point. You know, they want, they're doing research now for local stuff. And you're mm -hmm. like, well. <laughs> And uh, I say this too often, but I always say it's just like the local news on TV. Yeah. If um, something bad didn't happen here yesterday, they're going to get it from Nebraska. Yeah. <laughs> so, and they're going to publish it in the newspapers. Oh. Um, so there's one thing in here I'm just going to show you as an example. See, that's where to me the red, the red box up there is much easier to move around. I see what you mean. Okay, I'm going to have to get used to that. I mean, it that's really great. it really makes just moving around so much easier because then you can just scroll down a column and move around and come back up. It, it just makes life, to me, a lot easier and quicker. That's awesome. Thank you for saying that. So here's some of your local stuff further along in the newspaper and um, everything, um, news from Westminster. Westminster is real close, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I think we went through it last night. Um, really hyper-local information about who's visiting whom and where they're going. And, um, and that nowadays, be, nowadays you don't publish that stuff because you get your house for a glorious That's yeah. true. That's yeah. a point. <laughs> yeah. And then here's a neat wedding, and boy, I wish, uh, this is really cool. I'd love to find this in my own family. They describe all the treats they made, who was there, who was involved in the wedding, and um, it's just a really neat article, and it happened right here, so that's kind of fun, and you probably even recognize some of the names. <clears throat> so those are great. We come back out here. Say I was interested in this paper, this one page, um, I can do two different things. Now, this wedding thing is not going to be kind to me. Um, it's not going to be a good example. Let's do the um, advertisement over here. I'm going to show you why. So, um, say I want to capture this little canning season advertisement. I want to get it all in the screen. So 
but I can see it pretty well. Let's try this, see what we get. And see these little scissors up here? Um, you can click on that, it's kind of like a clip save feature. But it captures a portion of a paper, not the whole thing. What you're currently viewing. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, whatever you're currently viewing. and um, You can download it to your computer. You can print it out just as is, whatever you captured. And it's also opened it up in a new window for you. The other thing you can do is like, gosh, I'd like that Crouch Maxwell wedding, but it's really not a size where I can capture it very easily with that tool. You can come here to PDF. And it's capturing the entire page. And it's a really good quality. It's, um, we call it 400 dots per inch. So that's really nice quality PDF. It's going to be your best copy. But you can save that entire page. Um, just go and file save up here. Somewhere in here. I love it different. Can you throw a box around there? Not yet. That's something that everybody asks about, but um, that would be a nice feature if Library Congress would do that at some point. Well, now, I, I have done screenshots, but I just do it my manual way, mm -hmm. which on the Mac is a control shift forward. But, I mean, you can do a screenshot that you want mm -hmm. uh, the same way as the scissors, but uh, mm -hmm. and then you can box around what you want. I mean, I do that. That's a good idea. Maybe it's copied down here. You can copy it and then it will save to your um, your file that well the kind of different things that you're saving. Okay, I want to do some searches for you guys. Um, throw something at me. I've got some examples if you don't have any ideas, but <laughs> oh, yeah, I got one. Okay. Um uh, WBF Corbin or Corbin Murray. How about that? Corbin, Corbin Murray. Murray. I knew it occurred in nineteen oh nine, but Okay, can you tell us a little bit more um, it occurred here in Wahala, so it'll be, in the, it'll be in the Kiwi Courier. Okay, and um, let's see. Something that you might want to just start with South Carolina Papers. And this box down here is the default simple search box, mm -hmm. and it's going to try to capture things within five words of one another. So I'll, maybe I'll put Corbin and murder. Corbin and murder, out. yeah. Another important thing to remember is to just keep trying your search terms if you don't get something right mm -hmm. on. Um, so we could put that in there. We could also, if we don't get good results, drop it down a few times. I don't find much within 100 words. It's um, going to be on a different article usually. But you could do that. Am I spelling it correctly? Mm -hmm. And. Um, I always like to start big so we don't have to change the dates. But if we just got a thousand results, we could come back in here and change the years and say, I think it happened around 1870 or whatever. Well, it happened, I know, in 1909. 1909, okay. But you could go from 1908 to 1910, just so I'm. Sounds cool. Okay, so that way, just in case I'm off. If we get too many results, we'll do that. And we could come in here and get things that are. Um, yeah, maybe I'll find another for me. <laughs> <laughs> so you could come in and say, I want to do from January 1st, 1908 to... Um, to then is fine. Mm -hmm. To then, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's Let's see what that comes up. Let's see if there's any, been any other murders. So here it tells you we've got 18 results for that search. Mm -hmm. all Go back to find out what happened in 19. I think Marshall, I think it was March of 2009. I think it was March of 2009 is the paper I looked at, and it was a three page article. Oh, wow. I went all the way to the right. Yeah, Third but that March July. of 2009 had another article. Mm -hmm. Scroll down and see if there's a March of 2009 showing up. Okay. And I like to look. Uh, it shows Charleston and all these other ones. Yeah, oh, wow. possibly. I know it was the Kiwi Courier. Okay. That's it right there. This one right here. That's the article. Awesome. Okay. Thanks. 
And um, one thing I do like to look for is little clusters of the pink because that's trying to highlight the terms you search. Mm -hmm. And since you had four knowledge, what's going on? Yeah. That was it, WBF Corbin and, and CD, which is Chris, is that brother, shut down my parties while making the rest of a boy charge for shooting a mailbox. Wow. Yeah. It's a great article. I, I mean, I've printed the whole thing off, but it's just really interesting to read. So just enjoying the way they wrote back then is mm -hmm. what I found interesting. But I didn't know anything about this till I, I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't do a search. I just looked for Kiwi Courier. And I knew when they were shot, so I just looked for a day or two after they were shot. And that's the, how I bumbled onto it. But I'm loving this search. This is great. That's great. Yeah, because if you get too many results, you, this helps you really uh, narrow it down to the time you're looking for. And there could be, if you search all states, there could be a Corbin out in Texas. You know, and there are some. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I do know that too. And there can. <laughs> But great. this That's is a good great, great example. But I love this search. This is fabulous. I'm, I'm glad to know about this. Yeah. But it was so interesting the way they detailed the entire trial. Do you know they arrested these guys and tried them like within a day? Wow. I was just, the time frame of learning about this was seeing how things were done that many years ago was really impressive. Um, and how they detailed the everybody's testimony. Yeah, it was interesting. That is interesting. See how he was sworn and testified the following, and he sworn and testified, and he did this. It's just, it was interesting the way, just learning how they wrote back then is just it fascinating. That's great. And this might be the type of thing that maybe your grandparents just didn't talk about. Maybe they're like, You're this right. is an uncomfortable situation. Nobody really wants to discuss it, and it just dies with the family. Yeah. And, um, it's neat that it's in the newspaper and you can read about it. Yeah. That's, that's good. Thanks, that's a good example. Yeah. I'm glad to know about that service. That's going to help me out. <laughs> and you can keep playing around with it. Um, let's see if it's good. Did it say WF Corbin? WBF. So another way to look, say we didn't know he was murdered or somebody, we didn't know what the situation was. But I'm interested in that fellow. You might, sorry, did you say W B or F? W period B period F period. Okay, so stands for William Benjamin Franklin. Wow, that was his name. But yeah, it was W period B period F period Corbin. Yeah. So this might, it may not catch it, but let's try that. If you know somebody's name or initials, this um, with the phrase is going to get all those letters. You know, ah, as opposed to words, it picks either or. The phrase is looking just for that phrase. Mm -hmm. Do any of the Google search hacks help with this? Like if you put it in quotation marks or plus or like minus? the Boolean operators? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's how I kind of was trained to do it as well. Yeah. But none of that really works with this database because um, librarians can design it. Gotcha. <laughs> but I really, <laughs> I really like better the way they did it here. It's a little bit easier. So every once in a while, this is going to pick up the random WB ads all over the page, but um, hopefully we'll find something interesting. And I'm going to take out this date. If I can, let's just put it up here and wipe that. And this is one where you might have to, maybe he went by Bill Corbin or something like that, or he should have been Ben Corbin. And, I don't know where he went by. Be honest. <laughs> wow. Something all came up. Lock Kiwi Courier. Yeah, that's good. Wow, look at all There's a little cluster here I'd be interested in. I gotta go. I gotta do some searches. I, boy, I can't wait to get home and do some searches now. <laughs> and uh, that to me, I'm not interested in that. I'm not like anything. But up in here and right down here for a long line. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> interest me a lot. Let's see what it's saying. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So sure enough, theirs is a state. This is a state. Oh, cool. Tells you where it is. Good. I wanted to know where it was. You At might Negro be Fort Creek. Go cool. out and find the old. How cool. Homestead or something out in the country. Mm -hmm. 
Seneca River, you won't get a far. Uh, no, I know it's under the light. Yeah. <laughs> is it all built up now? Or? It's, oh, it's under the lake. Yeah. It's under the lake. <laughs> yeah. It's it kind of crazy. Like, it's an Oconee problem. <laughs> Yeah. So that's me. I'm glad we found something we haven't seen before. No. Um, hey, Baxter, hey, so. Patsy's dead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and this, is, uh, learning this search is awesome. Great. I had no idea they were that searchable. I didn't know y'all had done SCR. This is great. Mm -hmm. Sherry, do you have something that you want us to search for? Uh, yeah, just for try louder milk election. L -O -L <laughs> louder like louder. L O U. The D E R milk election. Alright. Yeah. And do you want that? Um, that would be in Oconee County. Okay, okay. Since that's a real, uh, might not um, get repeated a lot of other ways, let's just try a simple search and see what kind of okay. results we get up here. Because I have no idea when that happened. But something on his genealogy. These names. Okay. Michelle Lattermilk. That's what I was thinking of. Okay, so um, it pulled no. up something from Kansas and Montana. No. no. Yeah. My initial thing to do would be let's just search Lattermilk in South Carolina okay. and kind of work with it from there. Keep playing with it. So the simple searches are here, the advanced searches bring it back. That's great. Mm -hmm. Jamming it up a little bit too many times. Leo Barr, can you show up with her? This makes me feel better. Sometimes I do that and make it go. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. This part doesn't do anything. It doesn't. Is that a German name? Yeah, I guess it is. I haven't gotten too much on his line yet. Hmm. So far, I don't really have his mother and his sister. So. Wow. And when do you think they lived? Hmm? When do you think they were um, living here? It was either his father or his grandfather that was elected to something in Oconee County. Oh, wow. Well, it had been prior to 1922. See, that's the key. Yeah, that might be. It might not be back that far. Hmm. That's about 14. There's some key career. Can we look at that one? Yeah. 1913. Mule fairs. Thank you. There's a lot of articles about how dangerous automobiles are. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and there's, I've come across a lot of my searches in the Kiwi career. Um, which one? Company was it? Uh, every Kiwi Current, there's a mules for sale. <laughs> yeah, he, they even say he withdrew $110 to go use the purchase of some uh, cow and winter garments and shoes for his children. Wow. Okay. Oh, well, I guess that gives me some initials. Okay. Yeah. He didn't put yeah, it in his pocket. Milk. And what, what was the uh, date of the paper? It says November 21st, 1917, down here. You can see that here, and you can also maybe see it up here. He apparently lost his money when he didn't put it in his pocket or something. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's an interesting article. Yeah, so kind of day in the life, something that's going on. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. He's still um, just reading that. What else? Well, you could stay up 24 hours a day for years trying to read through all this. And then <laughs> you really. You get cross-eyed. Let's look at another something that happened a couple months later. So we'll have to 
As little places like us come up with good quality originals, I know I've probably bugged y'all about that before, but is that on the table anywhere that they might replace bad images with better ones? I think, um, yeah, I think the library comms should be up for that if we were able to do it after the fact. Right. We would resend like, a batch get it, time. Get also, done and then. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I think another thing that we'd be able to do is if we're adding stuff locally, we'll have a little more um, control over what we get put in there. And this was stuff from microfilm masters yeah. that might have been done in the 80s and 90s. Not a bad thing because by the 80s and 90s they started having standards and they give yeah. you a lot more information about each paper and um, uh, try to, they're pretty good about getting the best quality at that point. Some of the earlier stuff that yeah. private companies like Bell and Howell and ProQuest mm -hmm. did, um, it also has to do with technology. If they were doing it in the 50s and 60s, it's really rough, but at times that's all we've got. Mm -hmm. um, that's what some of the Ori County newspapers were doing now. Is, um, we're able to purchase copies from ProQuest, who owns the material, and get permission from them um, to put it online. And it's so much more expensive to do. That's what we got from the account. Say a local newspaper in 1865, down here in the South, was reporting on the Lincoln assassination. Oh, yes. That would be cool. Would they, would they interview people to see what their reaction was or anything? Um, one example. Because the war was over, research, had just been declared over, and then he was assassinated. Yeah. Um, the let me search something for you. If y'all have time. Yeah, that's cool. That'd be cool. That is fun. Um, yeah, they covered the, the World War One before before we entered. Yeah. So I just wonder what they would. Yeah. I know there was. Oh, can I show you two more things? Sure. If you were interested in doing. Um, searching more than one state, you could come in here and there's like a control button. You could do control left, click Colorado, and then control mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Oh. And you just come down and yeah. do a whole bunch of different states. You could do the whole southeast if you want. Hmm. Well, then they, like in genealogy, they say sometimes the borders move. Sure. Right. So mm -hmm. you've got somebody at one place that says they were born in Alabama, and another place says they were born in Georgia. That's a good point. And it's like, mm -hmm. just, yeah, and the, yeah, the boundaries don't need as much sometimes, and people moved around a lot more than you think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were following work and uh, getting married to other families and moving to their family. Um, if you want, I went back to all states, that was just an example, but I know that there's a Columbia newspaper called the Columbia Phoenix, and they did something real aggravating that we had to split it up. They kept changing their title the first four weeks, so we've got four different really? renditions of it separately in here. So. That bugs me, but I can't do anything about it. And they're all called Columbia Phoenix, I think. So if you wanted to come down to a specific title, you could find the Keeley one and just search Keeley. It's harder to do because they're getting more and more papers in there. When we started. Here's the one that we need. The control. Few other guys, and this is just that I know they're here. You do not necessarily have to know they're here. And I think there's a Daily Phoenix in here with Brad. And um, I might not put a 
assassination. I can't remember the terminology. It also, you know, tried to do it in 1865. But one, that's a neat thing to bring up because um, when was he shot? Like April 7th? April 15th. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the news was a little slow because yeah. we'd, um, um, Sherman had come through and was messing up with all the telegraph lines and that sort of thing. So it took a little bit of time. And let's see what this says. See, so yeah, they're, after they're, his still, death, they're still talking about him in the present tense. Right. So they don't, um, right mm -hmm. around here, they find out that he has been assassinated. But um, still, April 21st, they think he's alive and just been inaugurated and have everything. So um, it's real interesting the lag time in um, a period of time when the Civil War is still going on and um, they're getting late news. So that's kind of fun. And they do talk about it. Um, when I've been at Library of Congress meetings, we all get together once a year. Mm -hmm. Everybody else kind of reads a big bias into it, but I was reading, I was like, I didn't think it seemed really like they were, might just be me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that they were saying really a lot of horrible things about Lincoln after he died. But uh, maybe it's in the eye of the reader. Um, but um, there is bias in the newspapers and definitely different areas, and they just really lambast him when he first gets elected. They're really upset and they're about to start the Civil War. So it, those are kind of interesting to read, all the build up. So that's everything I can think to tell you, all the highlights about it. Okay, here's a big question. Mm -hmm. Why is the Seneca Journal not in there? Seneca Journal. Okay, and the Clemson, the Clemson Messenger, I didn't see that either. Were they before or after 1922? I don't know when they started. Is it that may be. But see, I, I, I mean, the Clemson Messenger would have been mm -hmm. probably around a long, long time. I've never heard um, of the Clemson. I know there's a Pendleton Messenger that well, kind of predates that, right up to 1836. And that's why we haven't been able to do it. Mm -hmm. I can search Seneca Journal and just see what's going on with that one. It sounds kind of familiar. And it's still it changed names yeah. to yeah. Yeah. Um, the Seneca Journal. Tugelo Tribune. Tugelo Tribune and then the Seneca Journal. Daily Journal. journal. Now it's just the journal. <laughs> so um, going off of your initial information, you could search it in the keywords and come in here and see what's there, mm -hmm. and if we don't find anything, we can come down and say, I'd like to filter it by South Carolina, um, and it, it'll give me a drop down of all the South Carolina counties. Mm -hmm. And um, I can't think that we've seen any very old Seneca journals, which would tell me that it's they're not about very turn of old. Century. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which so, century? Right. <laughs> We, we, we've been through two of them. Uh, I have. I've lived in two different ones. There it is. 1930 to 1952. But they wouldn't be online to Now, if you click on the 30 to 52, would there be anything there? No, because they don't move. Well, that's what I'm... Yeah, so I didn't know when it started just being published. It just gives you the information, but there's no issues to look at. Right, right. this is gotcha. all publication library yeah. catalog information. Gotcha. But one nice thing is it will tell you relationships. It'll say one of the titles before that was Farm and Yes, Pirates. and so, I have yeah. seen, I have researched and found obituaries. So, is the farm and factory on here? Yeah. Uh, the library catalog is. But no issues. Right. No. But the so now we know where 1903 and 1921. Now, you girls probably knew about farm and factory. Yeah. yeah. Somebody like me, I wouldn't have known the name. But that's telling you some good information. And. But there's no issues. What you can do is see which library might have something about that. Uh, library. Uh, yeah. I think they're. The whole I don't know if they're. They have some part of that. Yeah, I found them over here in the microfilm. Yeah. That's where I found them. That's good. So, just some scattered copies down in Columbia that you could go look at. And Clemson's got just one original, it looks like, of that. Um, 
So, so this, this is a good place to go for, even for newspapers mm -hmm. that aren't on it. You mm -hmm. can still find out where you can find mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if they have the, uh, they don't, you don't necessarily have to always look at the originals. If they've got a copy of it, like this microfilm service copy, that's going to really help you. And one reason why we wouldn't have done a small title like this, um, for this one, we have a service copy and don't own the master, so it wasn't in our list to pick from. Mm -hmm. And we were also trying to start with the longest, Danger. most complete yeah. runs that we could. So all of our earliest newspapers are mm -hmm. several years not missing very much, and now this past grant cycle we're getting down to some of the smaller ones. We applied for a fourth one, we're not expecting to get it, but we thought all I can do is say no, and um, we were trying to do, fill in all of the rest of the 1836 to 1865 titles that um, South Carolina owns, and um, that would be really nice if we could include that in here, but that's a long shot. <laughs> so, um, I'm glad y'all are interested. I, I love it. It's, yeah. uh, it's an it's incredible resource yeah. tool for us. Oh, it's huge. That's where we get a lot of history because there's not, like, most of it either owned personally or the newspapers. And it's helped us be able to direct people to it, especially. Um, well, we inevitably get people with, like, one old newspaper and they're like, you need this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me no, see if I need it. That's a good point. Um, of course, anything after 1922, we might want to keep. But at the library, they've got well, a microfilm. Well, that's true. They back out everything current, don't they, mm -hmm. over there? Yeah, they're sitting on microfilm for most everything since. So why is there no copyright law with them over on microfilm, but y'all have a copyright issue? Um, mm. With them, as a huge time. Well, I mean, I can go over and get a 1935 paper or a 1950 paper over on microfilm and make copies and do whatever I want to with it. How is that different than what John are doing? That's a good question. So, depending on who, say, USC Libraries in the South Carolina made a copy of the microfilm. Um, they, we own, you know, say I'm part of the library, we own that copy and have the rights to do what we want with it. Um, if there's anybody, Kiwi Curry is not an orphan title, they're still owners, people that own that name, and we, if we wanted to put it online, we could go approach them and say, could we get permission to make this available online? You have the copyright, we have the physical items. And then you work with someone like that. And then you might have orphan titles, um, which there are several in South Carolina, and say the business went defunct in 1930. There's nobody to seek out and find permission from. Um, it's more likely that we could use that. I just wonder, you know, how do they get them microfilm copies? And they, did they get a something that allowed the Kiwi crew says, yeah, you can make microfilms and people can make copies all they want to? Let me search that for you. It's probably something that um, I just don't understand why we can do microfilms, but we can't do it online. Um, I guess that's where I'm confused, or mm -hmm. I'm not explaining myself right, or something. No, I think you are. Uh, I, they're doing what's most. I mean, how is that different doing it online versus doing? Does it differ in the definition of published? I it think. could be, and uh, um, there's some loopholes in copyright law too for educational purpose. Uh, so is that a, is that a library? Uh, you're not necessarily you're not doing money it of to it. make money. I have to pay for it. <laughs> yeah. Only because they have toner and paper, and that's yeah. what I want to pay for. It. And they're non-profit, too, so. We'll see who has it. Yeah. Well, I'm just curious about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess that could be because it's over there in a library. That may be kind of the difference. And yeah. what you donated to us most recently, probably not be updated in this record, but... Um, as we got right now. So Kiwi Courier, 1849. You can look down and say libraries that have it. And for whatever reason, we're usually pretty low down on the list. Everybody's got random ones. California? Uh, you never know. <laughs> I'm looking for a 
fast. Sorry, I'm skipping through real fast. Okay. So the difference here is this is um, the state archive, and we've given USC Libraries has probably given the state archive the microfilm master. It says it right here. Yeah. And the master is really important. You can't do much with the service copy and have any permissions. But if we have permission to use the master at the state archive, and they've got some of this 1930s, um, we might be able to add that to our local catalog. Yeah, I mean, they got the 20s to the 30s to mm -hmm. the 32, 33, 34, 35. That can get us on up another 13 years if right. we get that. That's, that's and like we drive driving to look at it. Yeah. Time. Something that is Philip at the library too. He's up on because they they are digitizing a lot of stuff locally, and it's just very complicated. <laughs> I think um, also I think something I said in the beginning is they were trying to come come up with a manageable, executable project in the beginning, and they may change some of their parameters once they get through 20 years and people want to keep going and they're still funding for it. Um, I could see them coming back like. Hey, let's go up to the 40s if you've got permission to do it. Something like that. Go backwards a little bit. And maybe OCR will be better and they can figure out that epistenesis complication. Um, but we always want more. I always want more on yeah. mm -hmm. So we, so we can stay up to midnight and never jump. That's fine. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Newspaper party. <Yeah. laughs> That's all I got to say. Um, follow up with me. Um, you saw my contact information mm -hmm. on the website. Just you feel free to call or email. I'll get back to you. And um, if you hit a wall or uh, search something, have a question about it, I'll get to you. So if I want to go back to your website, do I hit up there where it says humanities? Um, yeah, you can search. It's on the. I would have to sure. search. I can't just go back to there. Okay. Yeah, I just use this. I always want to say DNR, so uh, uh, you can come in here, come to the about page, and I'll get gotcha. the bottom under contacts. Okay. That's where the blog is and all that. Okay. Yeah. And there's other people. If I'm not there, um, Kate Boyd is my direct boss, and she's got lots of information. And then um, Craig Keeney is the cataloger of published materials at the Care of Indiana. And he, probably knows more about South Carolina newspapers than anybody in the state. So uh, you can always call him when you're there. Laura is the girl that um, just left such a hotel. Yeah. She's great too. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks for coming. That's great. Wait,